So I'm going to show you how to composite glass in uh, Blender. So normally, as you may know, um, you have an object here, and it is actually impossible normally to get glass, objects behind glass. You can't get them in the compositor. And as you see, if I press render here, we have Suzanne. Um, and if I zoom in, you could see see it better. And I got a glass plane in front of Suzanne. And what we're going to do is in the compositor, we're going to see how we can change the color of Suzanne. And normally there's crypto mat, which is um, basically a way to select objects in Blender in the compositor. And you can use it as a mask um, to select that object. And then you can change properties about that object, such as the colors. Um, you can uh, color balance just that object. But the problem is you can't do it with something behind glass. Um, in a two-dimensional compositor, like the one Blender has, it is impossible normally to grab an object that is behind glass and where the camera is in front. So a two-dimensional compositor normally cannot handle refractions. Um, and it also cannot handle objects behind volumes, for example. Um, but I want to show you that there is a way to get around this limitation. And no, this is not deep compositing. Um, this is another workaround. Um, and basically it involves using two render layers. So um, we have our scenes here. And what I did is I took this scene. And it's just a basic studio lighting setup, sort of. Um, so I got Suzanne here, I got the glass in front, and I subdivided a bit, I added some edge loops, um, and this is just a plane with two lights set up. So what I did is I just simply clicked this icon here, or no, this icon here, I clicked on full copy, and then I got a second scene, but now you can see it's different. So I'm going to go into solid view and all I did is I deleted the plane on the floor. That was, um, that was this plane. I deleted that. And all I did is I went down to the world options, turned off the strength for the world because we don't want any lighting. And then I gave Suzanne a new material of just a standard emission shader. So it looks like this. So that's my second um, render layer, I mean um, my second scene. And then for the first scene, I gave Suzanne a principal shader. So the reason this is, we're doing this is because we're basically going to say, okay, so we're going to render this one first, or first scene, and if I go into camera view, you can see with the preview, we'll get this. And that's just a standard principal shader, um, nothing special about it. So it's just a principal shader. And then if we go to the second scene, what we can actually do is use the emission shader shining through the glass as a mask. So we can grab all these areas that are um, lighter and we can recolor that in the compositor and then apply it to the previous render layer which would be here, and that will have Suzanne, and we'll have all the refractions calculated. So we're actually going to do that right now. Um, so I'm going to render this out, and it'll just take about maybe a minute. So I'll just let that go. Okay, so you can see our first one is rendering here. And I probably used sam a sample count that was a little high, so it may take a little bit longer, but that's okay. And now you'll see when this one's done rendering, it will go to the second. Just like that. And now we got our second one rendering. And the emission shader is behind the glass. 
and you see you got all the fractions that will all be included and yeah so what I did is I'm gonna go to the compositor and I'm gonna just show you how I did that so all I did is I took the second layer and that's this one the emission shader and all I did was use that as a factor for where to change the color so for example um, let me better explain this so I got this render layer here if I um, I have node wrangler enabled so let me make sure yeah you'll want to enable this it really speeds up your workflow so what I do is I control shift and click to preview a node and if I zoom in here using alt V on the keyboard you see we got the emission shader and if you look very closely you see that Suzanne does cast some refractions around the edge and this will all be taken into account so uh, that will be used as a factor to the white colors will be used as a factor to mix in this new color that you add so let's say we want to make Suzanne like blue you can easily do that and you could change anything about it <laughs> um, you can even make it dark and it will still be using be lit like the principal setup so it will still be using like the proper shader but all you're doing is just changing the color and um, yeah this is a really easy way to change the color of an object behind glass um, you can even do more advanced things such as use that mask to maybe add color balance so for example if I add like a color balance and I just use the mask so let's say I add like a mix shader and then I use this and I add in the image and then um, actually I'm gonna use the one that I colored so I'm gonna use like this one and then I use the color balance um, what you're going to notice is if I plug this into the factor of that mix shader also, um, you're going to see that if I change the color balance, it will only adjust, it will only adjust the contrast on the object behind the glass. And that's extreme useful because you can do any kind of effect and it will only apply the changes to the object behind the glass so you effectively got a mask for objects that are behind glass so uh, yeah I really hope this uh, helped um, I think um, this is imp an important topic because it may be it's probably very useful um, I know a lot of people want to know how to composite objects behind glass and I just thought I'd show you guys because it's very um, useful in visual effects and uh, yeah so I'm gonna have this file up on my patreon so you guys can explore it um, link will be in the description and yeah so thank you guys for watching subscribe and see you later